I see a little silhouette of a hidden London Hangouts crew because lockdown's easing and we're at the London Transport Museum to find out what's going on in there. So team, masks on, we're going in. All right. Right. Hi everyone, welcome to a very special edition of the Hidden London Hangouts this week. We are at the London Transport Museum, our home, our spiritual home, in this amazing theatre full of moquette, if only you could see it, it is beautiful, to have a look at what's happened since lockdown because the museum's changed, it's got bigger and better and we want to show you all about it. We've got some great surprises to come as well. Now interestingly, normally we just hang out in our own lounges today, we're all literally hanging out together and I'm delighted to say here is my crew, Yay! Chris Nix from the museum, Hello. how are you? Well, obviously, after last week's episode, I'm, I'm dressed here to be uh, interviewing on behalf of Horse and Hounds, <laughs> which is nice. And yeah. can I just say, by the oh, way, yeah. what a great <laughs> pair of pins you've got, because people does. don't normally see them. Oh, yeah, of oh course. God. People can see we've got legs. We've got legs and everything. It's wonderful. Legs. A whole new range of chat. Mm. City Holloway's here. Hello. I kind of missed the memo on how to dress nicely today, and I'm just wearing kind of regular jeans and a T-shirt. But I have coordinated with Laura in the the black and denim and so. looking you did buy the jeans in notting hill as well i did there yeah. you go yeah that was that was also awesome. a story to that as well and uh, <laughs> hello laura hilton brown <laughs> how are you i'm good how are you this is very surreal actually because I feel like we're on the stage and we should be kind of quite formal and professional. We've just had a right little giggle fest um, because we haven't seen each other for a little while. So I have got a bit of the giggles as well. But it's really lovely. I feel like I could touch you all from where I am. It's, it's very lovely to be here with these guys. It's flipping good. And what I would say is <laughs> earlier on today, we all did our COVID tests. We're all COVID negative. So I was sitting within our distances. It's all nice and fine. But it means that we are actually hanging out as we always intended we would do. Now, somebody on the team did say, one of our crew, said that it looks a little bit austere and we're a bit formal today. So we need to make sure that we do whatever we can to sort of liven it up. So I thought maybe do that. <laughs> bit of, uh, I bit can't of, do that. Aware oh. of the camera <laughs> angles, I think. <laughs> so. Oh, go on. Uh, Marvellous <laughs> stuff. So anyway, today we're at the museum and so much has changed in a year, hasn't it? In your lives and in ours, but also here at the museum. And so we thought we'd have a look around and show you what actually has changed. Do you know, I could lay here all day. Where's Laura, by the way? Laura? Laura? Oh, hello, love. Hello. How are you doing, guys? Oh, I don't know. We found AstroTurf. It's very bouncy and oh. very comfy. It's very, and it's, uh, you know, a view, view towards the future. It Let's is. Look at that. Let's see what you did there. Well, it's nice to be relaxing, isn't it? Just lovely to be relaxing. It's actually almost as nice as the AstroTurf downstairs. What is oh. this? Uh, well, 1931 scooter maquette. Mm. Nice. Which was done after uh, memory, well, drawn after memory, which we talked about in the previous episode. It's Lovely. beautiful. It's it lovely. is. Transformed our suburban living lounge. Lovely Just place. a bit more maquette from us too as well. Mm. <laughs> I love this. Look. So this is an alternative to just watching one paper poster. We can now have a million digital posters. That's right. It's so many to choose from in our collection. Uh, just great to be able to get the embarrassment of riches up on the wall. And Beautiful. look at the amazing theme that they've got here. Fitness, sport, getting out and about in the green spaces. Just as, you know, the heavens have opened and we've had hail outside. But in theory, it's spring. You know, lockdown is lifting. and We're all getting back out and about. And we've got sailing and boat races, we've got regattas, we've got Wimbledon, we've got football. So many lovely posters here. That's so nice. I absolutely love this, Isn't guys. Isn't this gorgeous? A lovely piece of London history that's really recent history. Would you yeah. not say, it, it is, absolutely. Well, this was the world's first rainbow crossing. Um, appeared first up at Pall Mall. It's part of the Pride event. Uh, we've had it for a number of years, but we've been really struggling to find a place where we could fit it and really show it off. Yeah, I as mean, well it, as this. it weighs a ton, right? It weighs over 100 kilos. Really? Yeah, because yeah. it's a really heavy vinyl. Because you think, 
You've got to have thousands of people stomping over it. It's got to be really... You've got to glue it down, so it's got to be fairly hefty, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And so... that was the thing. The, the, it was replaced with a new one, because uh, this, had, after many years of service, had just, well, you know, as you can see, started to fray a little. Mm. So it's quite a difficult object to look after and keep in good condition forever. And now well, we're displaying it. I was going to say, London Transport Museum, even crossings. Isn't that cool? I know. And I open the doors, it's so cool, isn't it? I love this because last time we were here talking about the Route Master bus, how you said Hello. this bus, well not this bus, but the bus that was here was red, now it's gold. And there's a story to this, isn't there? Because actually, mm. the, the red bus has been taken away for maintenance. Yep. And in its place has become the gold bus. What is the deal with the gold bus? Well, this is for, was for the Queen's Gold Jubilee. Um, so it's painted in golden colours. It kind of reminds me of Harry Potter. I don't know why. It's quite weird. We are so used to red London yeah. buses in London, aren't we? Absolutely. Yeah. a different colour and it almost feels completely out of place. But I have to say, it is a pretty good paint job. And yeah. I do like the look of it, it's beautiful. So yeah, there's another new thing for the Transport Museum to uh, have a look at. A sparkly gold bus. Absolutely. Do you know, I love watching how this museum evolves because when I was a kid, I used to come here and love the buses and the tube trains. And now I look at it and it looks so blooming cool. Everything is so cool. And of course the gold bus. The big gold mm. bus change, that was literally pushed out of here, wasn't it? It was, yeah. The, uh, the RT that was there before needed a little bit of work on it, so we had to swap them out. Why not put a gold one in to celebrate? Mm. Uh, even better, that one occasionally does run, so you might get the chance to ride on that one in the future. And that ride was on it. done for the golden jubilee of mm -hmm. Her Majesty. I love it. And of course, your posters, Law, you were loving a bit of that, weren't you? I know. There's a new um, digital poster parade in addition to... Uh, the poster parade that we had before and I love both of them together I think it's such a great addition to the museum and it obviously means we can get more content out there as well which is always fab fantastic one of the things that I, I never normally do this but on TV they always have a glass of water don't they I, I, want, I, I thought you were trying I'm to like be Michael all Parkinson here, so so we have very fancy. to make sure it is water so only you got one hey Trust me, that's not water. Um, marvellous stuff. So, we also had a bit of a surprise today because um, with the museum opening up big wigs come and my goodness, to date, they come no finer. Because, Law, if you wouldn't mind switching on the grand switch on of the roundel, only Andy Byford, the commissioner of TFL, came down to say hello to us. And he specifically asked to be on the show, didn't he? He did. Which was pretty cool. Now, there was a bit of a bum fight, I have to be honest, a couple of black eyes, but Chris did win the gig of interviewing Andy. And here's what happened outside the front of the museum. Well, hello, Andy, and thank you for joining us here at the museum on this fabulous day. Yeah, no, what a great day. I mean, we couldn't have asked for a nicer day to, to reopen, and already it's been fantastic to see just swathes of people coming in, particularly with kids. You know, the whole place is vibrant. It looks amazing. The, 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 uh, the new galleries, the place is spotless. Uh, you, credit to you and the team. It looks really, really excellent, and uh, I'm already itching to get in that shop and buy some of the new products. Thank you. Well, it's very, very clean and, uh, and ready for action, so Definitely. it's good to see people finally in it. Mm -hmm. So, Andy, we, we know you from your time at uh, New York, uh, mm -hmm. the MTA, and also for your first year here with uh, Transport for London, and know that you're, you seem to like heritage. And do. Is, is, do you think that a love of heritage helps with the running of the modern system? Um, well, I do. I mean, I think, first of all, the heritage is inherently interesting. I mean, you only have to go into the museum to see all the old vehicles, the old signs, the tickets, the uniforms just there's so much um, history here that is intrinsically linked with the history of London so you know it's, it's, it's actually something that I just find inherently interesting and um, but I think also you you really get a sense of just how much London's transport system has enabled this city it, London just it would never have been as big as an important as it is without a viable transport system you, know, you talk about Metroland going up into the hinterlands of uh, of um, Buckinghamshire and places that's what drove the expansion of the city so um, I think it's important that Londoners and stakeholders, you know, government funders, 
see and understand that you can't have a viable city without a viable transport system, which is why you need to understand the heritage, uh, because you know the, the heritage continues to this day. When we see the Elizabeth Line open, that will again have a massive uh, beneficial impact upon London and its economy. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's not only interesting, but it's a story that has to be told. Uh, so I'm very proud of what we do here. This is the world's premier transport museum, without question, in my opinion. Thank you. And I, I, the last year has been obviously a, a testing time for everybody, but particularly the, the transport system has had a, a challenging time in response to COVID. What, what do you think the biggest challenges you face now that we emerge out of hopefully the last lockdown? And of what are you most proud mm -hmm. over the last year? I guess the, the biggest challenge is, is a unique one for um, this transport authority in that for years, decades, our problem has been almost how the hell do we cope with so much ridership? You know, you've, you've been faced with um, a capacity constraint almost. The buses are packed, the tubes are packed. Suddenly we're faced with a completely opposite problem that we've got to rebuild our ridership from the ravages of COVID. And, and let's not sugarcoat that. Our ridership has collapsed and as a result, our revenues have collapsed. So we've had to, we're having to rebuild that ridership and make a case to government, which continues to this day, in fact, even this morning, to make a compelling case that um, transport has to be properly funded. So I think that's the biggest battle, uh, getting customers to, giving customers the confidence to come back to the system and, and creating a compelling case to government to give us the funding that we need. What am I most proud of? Without question, my colleagues. The 27,000 men and women of, um, uh, of TfL and also all the uh, people that work within the contractors, you know, the, the bus operators, etc. Uh, the people of TfL and its contractors have just been outstanding. And in the face of adversity, you know, we've lost 90 colleagues through COVID. It's heartbreaking, quality, wonderful human beings that are no longer with us. And people here, for example, at the museum have faced the uncertainty of furlough. Uh, the uh, frontline operators have faced uh, you know, the concerns about interacting with the public, but at never, not at one, po uh, at one time, not at any point have we given up. We kept going, just like London Transport kept going through the Blitz, we carried on, TfL carried on, and I'm immensely proud of the people of TfL and its contractors for the way they've shown such professionalism, dedication to service, uh, and um, just sheer uh, tenacity in keeping going. Thank you, I would agree. That, mm -hmm. uh, that has been a tremendous effort. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool, isn't it, that even people like that are acknowledging that people like <laughs> us are making a bit of a difference. It's quite cool, isn't it, really? It's amazing, yeah. But I don't know about you, I was still quite keen to make sure that we got him back. Because why should Chris have all the fun? We want to talk, we wanna talk to him. I want to talk to him. So we thought, well, we need to get him onto another Hidden London Hangout, don't we? Mm -hmm. And the best way to do that is to find out where he'd like to go and whether he'd come with us. The Hidden London Hangouts have been going for just over a year now and we visited a huge amount of places. Um, so I'm, I'm keen to know where would you like us to go and visit next uh, and would you like to come with us? Sure, well, uh, <laughs> would I like to come with you? Let me think about that. Yes, uh, I love all the station visits. I've been doing some of the virtual tours, but I can't wait to actually get back into poking around, back to my love of heritage, <laughs> right? Into poking around some of these uh, places. Um, so lots of interesting sites. I love the, as I said, the old stations, but one place I'd love to go is Stockwell Garage uh, with the, the fabulous vaulted ceiling you know it's um it is a classic piece of architecture so uh, if you do that please do sign me up right well there. it's an amazing place uh, and I know it's been on the list for a few people uh, in the fan base so yeah look we'll, we'll consider that done Andy fabulous. thank you very much for joining us fabulous really appreciate Cheers, it all the best I can't wait to go and see another bus garage because you, I, I must admit, I do really like my buses. And there's so much history in London. And Stockwell Bus Garage is one of those places that is his, so historic in bus history in London. How many times can I say history in London? I don't know, mm. but you've driven a bus and, and you driven. drove it very, very well. You Grandin. were excellent at driving Nailed the bus. It. And the bit I really loved was that someone we spoke to today said they are trying to get you three to drive a route master as oh, well. Cool. Oh, cool. Which yeah. I think I didn't would be know that. So, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed yeah. that. So, I, we're I, very excited. I thought Stockwell Bus Garage is a real kind of connoisseur's choice. You, you, you did that in Year of the Bus, didn't you? Did you come to Stockwell? Uh, do you know what? It, I didn't go, but we, we set it up in the suite of um, events. Yeah. It, it's a great place, and it has been on our list for a series or two it now. Was. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a definite go. It's, and there was, it's a really interesting place, isn't it? And speaking of Year of the Bus, that was the first time it was, what was it, 2012 or something like that? Uh, 2011? 14. 
I mean, and and yep, there's actually one really beautiful um, um, program on YouTube. It was a BBC program called Perpetual Motion, and it was all about the Routemaster bus. And it's a lot of Stockwell bus garages featured. A lot of the old mm. staff were there. And it's the most beautiful. It's an amazing building there, actually. So it's a really good choice, I think. I'd love to go. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much, Andy. And please come back. Um, so many things we've got to ask you. We cannot wait to have a natter with you and, um, and show you a part of our hidden London. Now, one of the, I think probably my favourite bit of today has been something that I, I wasn't really expecting when we started doing these hangouts all that year ago. It was the fact that we would actually say to people, we'll be in a certain place at a certain time. Why not come and join us? And you, the viewer, decided to buy tickets to the museum today and come and find us. And we were so humbled. Here's what happened when you met us. Do you know, the best thing about today is actually meeting the people who come down to the Transport Museum to see us and the Hangouts crew. And this is Sam Elmshurst, who very, very early on got involved in the Hangouts, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I found four of yours and then I suddenly got caught up and I've been hooked ever since. Well, I, I, I remember my first experience of noticing uh, Sam, Samantha was uh, when I was walking across the car park in Sainsbury's and <laughs> your video popped up of her painting the side of the house with a cartouche. What inspired you to do that? It was the Brompton Road, I think, episode before, the night before. And then I knew I had an expansive white tiles in a conservatory and I really wanted to get arty. And, and I've... As I said to you earlier, I've always loved the London Underground, but coming today, I love it even more, and I didn't think that was possible. You've injected so much into it, so much I, I see and know now, um, and I just wanted a bit of you and a bit of London in my little home in Norfolk. I think it's amazing. <laughs> I almost did the same to the back of my house in response. So. But the great thing is you came all the way from Norfolk today. I did, yeah. We left the house at quarter past eight. Amazing. 106 miles, I think. Went to Cockfosters and... Yeah, as soon as I got to Cock Foster's, there's the thingy, there's the thingy. Look at that tile. That is so cool. Yeah. Well, look, I think you're allowed to hold our rounds on now. Thank you. Smile for the camera. And we can verify that we're all real. We yes, are. we've got legs. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm passing over the hidden London roundel to a viewer. Welcome to the London Transport Museum. Thank you very much, Shitty. It's so much fun being able to actually meet the people we've been chatting to for over a year on the Hangout. How does it feel for you to be back here with the fam? It, it's amazing, actually, um, <laughs> to be back part of well, the Transport Museum, first seeing the uh, Hangouts on YouTube, and the first one was um, Island Tubes, actually. Oh, really? Um, one close to my heart, the 1938 stock, so um, yeah. yeah. Really wonderful to be back in there. Uh, good to be part of the team, really. Yeah. Ian, where have you travelled down from this morning? Um, Abbey Wood, um, uh, South East London. This will be the start of the uh, Crossrail. So they're now doing testing at the moment. So a lot of hive of activity at the station. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, uh, different to the underground, but uh, all good fun, though. So We might have to do a bit of Crossrail soon on the, on the Hangouts. I think so. Um, we've been to see a couple of sites, but many years ago. So... Keep tuned, everyone. We might be going to Crossrail soon. So here I am, and I've got the lovely Erica with me. And Erica, where have you travelled from today? I've come from Surrey today. And Erica was just saying that last week she went with her brother to another station. Yeah, I went to Holloway Road to see all the things that the Hidden London team have told me to look out for, and it was really amazing. <laughs> this is the this is the bit I love that on people's journeys in today they've started to look at these little things that we've talked about in each episode, and I've just noticed that we have some moquette here behind. Erica, do you have a favourite moquette? Is it in yeah. the cupboard? It's definitely this one down here, but I can't remember what it's called. That's Collindale Leaf, and I oh. think that might have been Siddy or Chris's favourite too. Oh, yeah. Yay! <laughs> no, no, mine is um, Fossil. Oh, very similar. Similar. Very similar. similar. Okay, can I ask you, super, super quick, favourite episode so far? That is such a hard one, but it's probably got to be either Oxford Circus or one of the Piccadilly ones. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like nice. that. Thank you so much for coming today. And it's lovely to see you. So good to see Real you Real people. Real people. <laughs> Do you know, I'm, I must admit, I'm really fascinated by the sort of stuff that you love about what we do and also your suggestions and we're always up for finding out more about what you want to learn about and one of those things obviously crossrail the newest bit of the system and yet people want to know about it not the history of it but almost the future of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
pretty cool though. It, it is. We, we've had uh, some access to it already. Cydia and I particularly uh, have been and, and had a look around yeah. now several years ago. Law went with us one time. I did. And it was I like, was just thinking that. It was, yeah, it was don't forget me. Yeah. Yeah. Canary yeah. Wharf 2017. 37 <gasps> degrees outside. It was, it was the hot day. And we were wearing a full PPE <laughs> that was like kind of like a raincoat material. So it was balmy underneath that. You were loving it. Really you were loving it. <laughs> And of course, all day we've been meeting up with various members of uh, the public and indeed fans of the show. Here's some more of you. Now, Laura, I've found us a new fan. He's not been watching for long. This is Sam. He's come all the way down from the Victoria line from Walthamstow. Walthamstow, that's my boy. Line. And uh, how many episodes have you watched? Uh, about three or four. four Great ones. stuff. Great. And your favourite episode so far? Uh, York Road was, was really interesting. Nice. Good, Good, Good shout. stuff. It was an excellent episode. If you haven't Good watched shout. it, go back and watch it. But also, you're a bit of a fan of Aldwych <gasps> Station, aren't you? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, my friend Ian, he got me got me involved into in London and we did the Aldrich virtual tour a couple of weeks back and uh, yeah it was really interesting to sort of see the bits you don't normally see so anyone who's interested in what goes on under your feet is it's something to, to jump in on and find out what's going on down there. Have you just done the virtual tour or did you do the actual station tour when uh, we just, were allowed to just as Just well. the virtual tour but I'm looking forward to doing the when you can the come back and do it can, yeah. Thank you so much as well for watching. That's all right. um, we are loving making them for you guys and we just want you to carry on watching so if you're enjoying it, we are too. And thanks very much for coming down on opening day of oh, the thank museum. You. Thank you, Sam. Cheers. Well, here we are in front of the museum and we have Pete with us, another one of our fabulous viewers. Where have you travelled from today, Sam? I've come down from St Neots, Cambridgeshire, so not very far, really. Oh, wow. Well, thank you very much for joining us. It's great to be here. Did you get on the tube on the way I here? I travelled on the tube from St Pancras, so not very far, uh, not very far from there. Uh, so I actually went down to uh, near Kensington and then crossed platforms and came back for a little bit of an extra ride. Nice! <laughs> and did you pick out some of the stuff that we've been talking about over the oh, last year? Oh, certainly yes, but I've been <laughs> fairly familiar with it anyway, to be honest. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So I've uh, got to ask, what's your favourite episode so far? Uh, and to be honest, Chris, loving them all. Oh. I've loved them all. I couldn't pick up an actual favourite. I've loved them all and the way you guys put them together. I've really enjoyed the, the lot. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you know, we were about to pack up and go home and suddenly we found another fan. This is Liam, has been watching us since very early days, haven't you? Yep, from the beginning. And <laughs> what is it about the Hangouts that makes you come back every week? I've got a link now, it's just, I just can't get rid of it. It won't Yay! get off the computer. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps its set alarms and so everything. So it's like virus, really. Really. <laughs> it's great fun. We're, we're, we're a benevolent virus, <laughs> basically, yeah. that just clings Malware. on. Malware. <laughs> and I tell you, he's brought us medicine to get rid of it because he's brought us all Prosecco, mm. all sweets and all chocolate. Yeah. It's pretty like generous, it's pretty it? well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Perfect night. The idea was that if we win the award, that we can open that Prosecco. I said it'd be gone well before then. Oh, yeah, darling, well yeah, yeah, yeah. The award's out till July. No. So what? Yeah, no, and it's a little while away. So thank you so much for, for watching, and thanks for making the journey up no, to see us. You're welcome. Yeah. Lovely day for it. I Gorgeous. know, God, isn't it and so pleasant? <laughs> and the hail. We, of course, have to ask you the question we've asked everybody else so far, which is, what's your favourite episode so far? I like the maps one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good choice. The maps one was very good, yeah. Very good. And the trip to the Isle of Wight. That was fun. Oh, really People really do I like the island tube. We're going to have to make a return visit there. That's Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Liam, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that that was my favourite part of the day. Yeah, mine it too. It really was. You guys are just wonderful. And thank you so much. I know lockdown's easing now and uh, you've got probably a million things to do and a million places to go, but you still find time for us. The figures, viewing figures for this are still going higher and higher every week. Within a couple of days of these films being put out on YouTube, we've got at least a thousand views. By the end of the week, we've usually got two to three thousand. It is absolutely wonderful and we can't thank you enough. Now, partly linked to that is the fact that we found out we've been nominated for an award. Uh, again, not something we ever imagined that would happen, but we have. Chris, tell us a bit more. Mm. Yeah, so uh, last year, of course, we, uh, we won the Museum and Heritage Award hey. for the Hidden London Exhibition, uh, which was, was tremendous. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been nominated uh, in a different category uh, in the Museum and Heritage Awards for our digital work this, this year, including Hidden London Hangouts, our virtual tours on Hidden London, uh, and also um, with, with Patreon. So it's, it's so nice to have um, all the things that we've spent the last year and a bit doing 
uh, nominated for that. It's, uh, it's mm -hmm. a really proud moment. Yeah, just, just to be nominated is amazing. And I think what's really special is it's a huge team that have put this together. The behind the scenes, all of the guides, just so many people contributing towards the virtual tours and the hangouts. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the nomination is just a massive nod towards all of those people to be like, great job, guys. That was a really tough year, but we pulled out something we good. We pulled through and, and yeah. it wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't have happened without you guys actually tuning in no. every week and coming on the virtual tours and becoming a part of our Patreon. I mean, we couldn't have done any of this without you. So thank you so much from the bottom of our oh, heart. Cute. And also a big <laughs> thank you to our, our technical team as well, uh, particularly Eleanor, who uh, week in, week out has, um, has helped us put this together uh, and get it into a semblance of order for YouTube uh, and also counselled us and guided us <laughs> along the way with us. A lot of counselling <laughs> goes on. A lot of counselling. We absolutely Poor love woman. Eleanor. Eleanor is actually sitting just behind the camera next to <laughs> such a babe. So you know what the Hidden London Hangouts are because you're watching them now. You know about Patreon, maybe you're a member, and you also know about our virtual tours. Where maybe you've been on one of them to Aldwych or somewhere else, but maybe you've never been to the museum and seen the Hidden London exhibition. So take a look at this. I do love that exhibition. It is so cute. It is like a whole year's worth of hangouts in one little bit of building, isn't it? It's cool. Mm -hmm. It is, it's great. Uh, to be able to take some of these spaces that we love so well and just pop them into a place that anybody can go and explore uh, fully accessibly uh, was just a tremendous you know, honour to be able to do it, really. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's great that it paid off so well as it has. Yeah. The award-winning exhibition, we love it. Well done to us and uh, thanks very much indeed for coming well along. Well done to us. Well done to us. <laughs> Didn't we do well? Thank Didn't God we for do us. Well, well at, at the end of every Hidden London Hangout, there's always notes, queries and questions. Obviously, normally there's a line here and I can do whatever I want behind. And unfortunately, there's oh. no notebook. There's can no, you? There's right. no notebook, none of that. Uh, but there is a mobile phone. And uh, some of the things that have come in, after last week's Notting Hill episode, mm -hmm. that we all love the posters, mm. um, Trivia Buff said the poster for the film, Too Many Crooks, allowed me to look it up on IMDb. It was released on March the 8th, 1959. So 62 years and nine weeks ago it is. Wow. Also, the IMDb sat as a piece on that tunnel focusing on the film posters linked to each of the films, including Too Many Crooks. Wow. It's all there, That's fantastic. which I just adore. Thank you so much for giving us all this information. It really does add to the picture. Um, and there's also another message that came through. Um, and this was um, from a guy called Richard. He said, I've actually got zero interest in the London Underground, oh. but I'm absolutely <laughs> loving seeing how happy you guys are doing these hidden London oh. I have watched some of them, and actually, it's the bant that I love. So, you know what? The great thing about it is it doesn't matter what you get out of this, whether you want to laugh at us, with us, or take a, <laughs> take a giggle at the, uh, at the jokes, or just learn about London's history. It's all there for you. Loads of other comments based on last week's episode as well. Um, James the Plonker says, I couldn't help thinking you, uh, you were like uh, in Crystal Maze down in that bit of that tunnel. Ooh, I mean, yeah. yeah. Do you know what? If I've been wearing leopard print, we, we've referenced Which this before, Which we've asked we? you continually <laughs> to get I, I, did, I did do the leopard print maquette I think. cravat, if you remember. We wanted a waistcoat. Yeah, we need more. We need, I need more. Too, we need more. And I've seen it online as well. There's people who say it. Um, Nick Potter says, a couple of suggestions for future programmes. South Kensington, the pro proposed deep level district line. Nice. And the old signalling school. Was there one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was, yep. yeah. Wow. King's Cross Metropolitan, old and new, including the city widened lines. That's the bit, the Circle District, uh, Circle Metropolitan line, yep. bit, isn't it? There's but interestingly, the whole of King's Cross would be a really good hangout to yeah. do, wouldn't it? Uh, it's definitely on the list, it's isn't it? It's pretty we, massive. Not long before lockdown, we went we and went, had a look at it. And yeah. yeah, it's <laughs> definitely worth yeah, it. Yeah, we, we need to get in touch with uh, Mike Guy at um, King's Cross. Maybe he'll give us another tour. We will. Stuart Bus Driver says, another excellent episode from the Fab Four. Loving the posters from the disused part of the station. Bovril seems to be the thing. 
It mm -hmm. really was, wasn't it? Mm. Who'd yeah. like a mug of gravy? You know I'll, what? I'll take I... a root master from upstairs. So will I. Oh. Yeah. Two oh. right. Oh. 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 Over a gravy. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a few hours yet before you can. <laughs> True. Uh, True. Uh, Dave says another super episode from the Fab Four. It's funny how Fab Four's caught on. I'm liking it. It's it's cool, isn't it? Seeing this chill four sounded a little bit like our trial was coming up. It does, doesn't it? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Be very contemporaneous reporting and all that. Seeing those posters and the colours still so vibrant in the hidden corridor was just great. I'm with Laura on that one. But Siddy, thanks so much for travelling super fast down the road to the shop. I'm a massive fan of Julia Roberts and Notting Hill was one of her best. So to see the shop again and the big photograph in the window, although not strictly hidden in London hangout, still added to a great episode for me. Thanks, thanks. Dave. That oh, was a lovely touch. You. I thought that ended the episode really well. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I think that. we might have a new spin-off series called Not Strictly Hidden London. Not yeah. Strictly. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite Hidden London. Co Co Covert yeah. Yeah. London. Covert <laughs> London. No, it was really lovely, actually. We were sort of what? just exploring the area and... Um, buying jeans. Buying jeans yeah. in all, charity all for shops. for the viewers' joy. Yeah. It was great. And finally, uh, Kevin Reed, great episode. Very interesting to a part of London I've not really visited. I live in Sheffield. Hello, Sheffield. Hello, Sheffield. Say out to the Crucible for us, please. <laughs> um, and the first place I go is to St Pancras Underground to get where I'm going to, uh, usually Ells Court. The one thing uh, I like is getting from A to B quickly, and the tube does that. The first time I visited London, many years ago, I asked for directions to where I wanted to go. You didn't ask me. Did I say the Pickley Dickley line? I'm sorry. Um, I asked this very friendly Londoner how to get from St Pancras to Ells Court. His reply to go on the Piccadilly line, the blue line, and then he told me to listen some. You can't get lost on the underground. Great advice, because within a couple of days, I worked out exactly how to use the system. It's so easy. That's why London is such a great place to visit. Not been for a while, for obvious reasons, but I can't wait to be back. Thank you very much. And it's so nice, isn't it, to get these bits of correspondence every week. It is so, so beautiful. And, and if we're in Sheffield, I'm going to say hi, Sarah, John and Link, our oh. friends up in Sheffield. Wow. Well. Anyone you want to say hi to, Laura? Oh, um, so many. But I did, want, I did want to say, I can't remember if it was you, Chris, but I used to call the lines by the colour, even when I worked at the museum. And it took someone to go, Laura, you really need to start using it. Because I'd be like, should we go on the pale blue line or is it the yellow line? Oh, oh my God. Like, you really need to learn the names of the lines. It's I think it might have been. the shade of blue, though. Right. Go on the blue line yeah you could, you could get into all sorts of trouble couldn't you yeah, yeah. yeah. trouble yeah. anyone you want to say hi to um hello world uh, everyone world. else who knows me i think yes. is the usual uh no i mean you know no not really i don't know hello <laughs> it's all good and hello mum uh thank you very much laura hilton brown as always thanks for venturing out coming to the moquette palace and just having a bit of a laugh with us i know i made it to this site visit no no trees on my track this time guys no. um but i wanted to go back to something that richard said that he's not a huge fan um, or necessarily into the London Underground. And that really resonates with me because it's not something before I started working here that I really took that much notice of. And it's really slowly over the years that I've become so much more interested in the small things that then make the journey so much more appealing. Um, and so I, I get what you're saying and I'm glad that, you know, one or two of our episodes might, might appeal to you because it's not for everyone, but there'll be something little for somebody mm. out there somewhere, I'm convinced. Absolutely. Mm. Siddy, thank you so much as always. Thank Gorgeous you. Gorgeous to be sat beside you. Oh, yes, it's, it's a pleasure being so close to you. So lovely. <laughs> um, I want to say, actually, you know what? It's a really interesting point because I also didn't know that much about London transport until a few years ago, or well, six, seven years ago. But I, there was always a slight fascination for me about the underground because I grew up in a place without mm -hmm. any train travel. So there was sort of a fascination for me. But I, there was always something, I always had a hunch that there was something more that we weren't actually seeing when we're traveling on it. And so I set up to find that out and I finally did. And so. look at the wealth Boy, of knowledge you know. I know, <laughs> right? Amazing. I tell you, if I sit in this seat much longer, I'm gonna have a hunch as well. Uh, Chris Nix, <laughs> as always, thank you for just being the encyclopedia and uh, tour guide extraordinaire today, actually. Well, thank you, it's so nice to be home. Isn't it? Um, it's been too long and uh, great to open the box of secrets and share it as ever with our viewers. Totally, we are sitting in a moquette theatre and uh, now things are beginning to open up we've already said if you fancy it we're going to do a night with where we down here four of us bottle of water no we can't do a bottle no. of water can we? bottle of water, bottle of water. Yeah, that's right. yeah yeah <laughs> bottle of water um and uh, we'll do an audience with so if you fancy that 
we'll get that sorted out for you. Keep your eyes on, um, on the Hangouts and we'll tell you more about it when we know. Um, so if you want to get in touch with us, it's Alex Grunton, it's Chris Nix, it's City Holloway, it's Hidden London Law, and it's at LT Museum. Find us on Instagram. Our feeds are actually quite interesting, aren't they? <laughs> so so let's myself. hope, even if we say so. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> I say so myself. And also, well done, us. Well done, again. us. You've found us on YouTube as well because you're watching us. But don't forget to like, subscribe and comment down below with any suggestions you've got, reminiscences, why you love the Hangouts or anything else you want to say to us and we'll get them read out as well. We'll be back next week in another amazing place. It's not this theatre, but we'll be something amazing. In the meantime, have yourself a great day and stay safe. Bye. Bye.